Um, I'm really excited to share Read Aloud with you. Um, this week, we're going to be focusing a lot on the topic of civil rights. Um, so we're going to be reading a couple texts about civil rights. You might see them in Read Aloud and in other subjects. Be this is because um, towards the end of the week, you're going to be doing an on-demand writing about civil rights. We want to front load this with as much information as possible and give you some articles that you can gather information from to do your writing. So uh, let's get started. All right, so our teaching point today is readers of nonfiction use the lenses of main idea and supporting details, author's point of view, author's craft, text features, text structure, part to part, and part to whole to analyze the text. So these are the things we're going to be thinking about as we read together. So the title of our text is Get on the Bus, Freedom Writers of 1961. Hmm, I know 1960s had uh, a lot of history going on there. Um, and what I see, I see a picture that looks like it's from the 1960s. I see black people and white people. It looks like they're in some kind of restaurant um, and they're sitting there hmm, let's read what the caption says top freedom writers stage a sit-in at montgomery alabama waiting for waiting room for white customers only um so that's making me think that they're doing some kind of protest a sit-in um where there was white customers only so that represents segregation so i think that they're protesting segregation there bottom Passengers of this smoking Greyhound bus, the bus was set on fire by a mob that followed the bus from the city. Some of the members of the Freedom Riders, a group sponsored by the Congress of Racial Equality Corps, sit on the ground. So I'm thinking that a group of people, a group of activists, people who were fighting for racial equality were attacked while they were on the bus. Maybe they were attacked by people who really didn't want racial equality. Um, so this was my orienting to the text. I looked at the title, some of the text features, the caption, and this is what I came up with. I think that the genre is gonna be nonfiction or it's gonna be a historical text. And it's gonna be about people fighting and protesting for racial equality. All right, let's keep reading. In 1961, bus stations in the South were segregated. Blacks and whites had to sit in separate rating rooms. They also had to use separate bathrooms. On May 4, 1961, a group of African-American and white civil rights activists decided to protest this. They started the Freedom Rides. And I think it's really interesting that it's African-Americans and whites working together to protest segregation. Sometimes we tend to think of or learn about only African-Americans who are protesting. So that's interesting that there's white activists too. Together, they rode buses through the South. Along the way, they tried to integrate bus stations. African-American freedom riders tried to use whites only restrooms and lunch counters. White freedom riders tried to use blacks only restrooms and lunch counters. The protesters lasted several months. Later that year, the government ended segregation in bus and train stations. So I'm thinking this is like an introduction paragraph and it's telling me that the text will be about civil rights activists fighting to desegregate, which means um, make it so blacks and whites don't have to be separate, um, fighting to desegregate buses, restaurants, and restrooms. Activists test Supreme Court decision. The Congress of Racial Equality, CORE, organized the 1961 Freedom Rides. CORE was a group fighting for equal rights for African Americans. It wanted to test a recent Supreme Court decision. The Supreme Court is the highest court in the nation. In 1960, the court said that the bus and train stations could not be segregated. For the Freedom Riders, Black riders traveled to the American South. They went into bus stations. They tried to use restrooms, lunch counters, and waiting rooms that were designated for whites only. The first Freedom Ride had seven African Americans and six whites. They left Washington, D.C. on May 4, 1961. Their plan was to reach New Orleans, Louisiana on May 17. They wanted to celebrate the anniversary of an important Supreme Court decision. 
It said that black and white children could not be sent to separate schools. On May 12th, three Freedom Riders tried to go into a white-only waiting room in South Carolina. They were attacked. Hmm, I think this section is really interesting because it's talking about how the Supreme Court was making laws or decisions that blacks and whites could not be separated, that they were trying to end segregation. But people weren't listening to them. People were taking matters in their own hands and they were attacking blacks who tried to go into white spaces or even vice versa. So there's kind of a conflict here. So from my main idea here, I wrote, even though the Supreme Court is saying that there shouldn't be segregation, people are still taking matters into their own hands and harming people who try to cross racial lines. Violence in Alabama. Hmm, I think this is going to be connected to what happened with this bus. On May 14th, 1961, the first Freedom Riders bus arrived in Anniston, Alabama. An angry crowd of about 200 white people surrounded the bus. They followed the bus in cars. When the tires on the bus blew out, someone threw a mob into the a bomb, sorry, into the bus. Ah, oh, they're getting violent. The Freedom Riders escaped from the bus, but they were beaten by the angry crowd. Another bus traveled to Birmingham, Alabama that day. Those riders were also attacked by an angry crowd. So it seems like the activists, the Freedom Riders, are experiencing a lot of violence by angry whites. So many white people were upset about what the Freedom Riders were fighting for, which was racial equality. Pictures of the burning bus appeared in newspapers around the world. They drew much attention to the problems in the U.S. Because of the attacks, core leaders could not find a bus driver who would drive the group. Core decided to stop the Freedom Rides. However, a leader from another civil rights group stepped in to help. She organized a group of students to continue the rides. The rides finally started again on May 20th. Police rode along with the, with the bus to protect this group. So I'm noticing like even though they were experiencing violence, this was just a setback and they still wanted to continue fighting for racial equality and people such as students and police were stepping in to help. So various groups is my main idea of this section. Good readers always kind of want to stop and summarize the main idea of what they're reading. Various groups of people stepped in to help, even though freedom riders were experiencing violence. Federal marshals called in. The police left the bus just before it arrived in Montgomery, Alabama. An angry crowd of white people attacked the riders as they got off the bus. About 600 government troops were sent to the city to stop the fight. The following night, civil rights leaders Martin Luther King Jr. led a service at the First Baptist Church. More than 1,000 people came to support the Freedom Riders. Later, a fight erupted outside the church. Government troops had to help to stop it. On May 24, 1961, a group of Freedom Riders left Montgomery for Jackson, Mississippi. Some African Americans tried to enter a whites-only area. They were arrested and put in prison. When they appeared in front of the judge, he refused to look at them. The judge sent the writers to jail for 30 days. So I'm noticing that this section is all about that even though the Supreme Court is saying that there shouldn't be segregation, which we also learned about in a previous section, people are still taking matters into their own hands and harming people who try to cross racial lines. Relief at last. The fighting and arrest continued. Hundreds of new Freedom Riders joined the case. The rise continued over the next several months. That fall, the government finally said that bus and train stations could no longer be segregated. So having read all this, um, I'm starting to notice that this had a problem-solution text structure. So I'm thinking there, there was actually a couple problems and a couple solutions. So I'm thinking one of the main problems is that blacks and whites did not have equal rights and many things were segregated. One of the main solutions to this was that freedom writers and other civil rights activists protested for integration and equality. Eventually, the government ended segregation. Another problem I noticed um, was that freedom writers were being attacked by angry whites. The solution to this was that the police, government officials, students, and leaders came out to help and support. So thank you for joining me for 
read aloud this Monday. Um, make sure that you read over this text. Um, this is going to be one of the texts that you use for your writing on demand later this week. Um, so make sure that you're paying close attention, taking some notes, and gathering those in those ideas about the civil rights movement. Have a happy Monday.